All right, welcome back, everybody. It's time for today's buzz. Several brave souls threw caution to the whipping winds in Massachusetts. A polar plunge was scheduled at Buzzards Bay to raise money for those suffering from hunger all across the country. But 30 minutes before the event, officials canceled it because of all the heavy snow. Well, as you can see here, that didn't stop some people from jumping into the dangerously cold sea anyway. Hopefully they were also raising money for hungry people as well. And thousands of consumers voted on some of these products and 28 products have been named the top products for 2017 already. The products are going to soon start appearing with a distinctive red product of the year logo placed on the packaging and as well as the advertising to help them stand out to customers. Now, product of the year is the world's largest consumer voted award for product innovation. And if you'd like to see all of the winners, you can head on over to the consumer page of our website. Just go to click on Detroit.com. Some big news for travelers. The days of unexpectedly finding a TSA pre check mark on your boarding pass at the airport without actually being a part of the paid program are numbered. The TSA will significantly reduce such access to expedited screening for non enrolled travelers starting this month. In fact, programs launch in 27 or 2011. I should say it launched back in 2011. The TSA has since granted some non members travelers access to pre check lines to lessen some of that traveler traffic. But again, that is going to be going down just a little bit. It is Friday and that's good news as it is, but we also give away something free here on local four news today every Friday and you can now enter for a chance to win two tickets to see rain a tribute to the Beatles celebrating the band's 50th anniversary release of their album the SGT. Now uh, it's also Sergeant, excuse me, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Heart Club Band. We have all heard of that. Uh, it's happening at the Fox Theater on Saturday, March 18th. You can head to the contest page of clickondetroit.com to enter. Good luck, Sergeant Pepper. It is 4:55, and coming up starting at 5 o'clock, we have local stories for you from Detroit, Southfield, and Ann Arbor. Plus, a local mom gets a brain tumor not once, but twice, and we are surprising her for Inspire Today. It hit me. It hit me really, really hard. Wait till you see how we help grant a wish for this mother of five that's coming up. And Kim has the morning off, but we are keeping an eye on the roads for you, and we're going to help you get around any issues this morning, as well as tell you about some of this construction that's there on your screen. Brandon? Great Lakes region still chilly to start the day here in the teens and 20s. Some single digit wind chills, but warmer air off to the south and west, tracking a Weekend warming next with you right here. Local 4 News today at 5 a.m. Don't go away. Bob Live from downtown Detroit. Local 4 News today at 5 starts now. Accusations of rape. Several Michigan State University players are suspended after disturbing claims against members of the football team. Traffic trouble and early morning crash expecting to cause big trouble on two local freeways. And we do have dry roads out there right now, but some snow moving into single digit wind chills to start your Friday. He said that kind of like a villain. I thought he sounded like a pirate. Well, that too. Welcome Arr. to Friday, everybody. Thank you for waking up with us. We finally made it. Finally Friday, right? And don't don't adjust your TV screen. This is not Rhonda. This is Jason. Thanks for being thank with you, us. Thank you for pointing that out. Like well, you know, some people might be a little confused. It is. It is the dude <laughs> uh, newscast today. We don't even have Kim here. It's all dudes. Oh, man. Well, just hang with us, please, uh, at home. We uh, are looking at cold temperatures once again, and the winds haven't really even started cranking up here around uh, Metro Detroit. They will later, lunchtime and beyond, but 21 at Metro Airport, mostly cloudy skies right now, 19 Ann Arbor, 17 degrees in Pontiac, 18 in Adrian, and some of our four zones, or uh, at least in Adrian, we're seeing single-digit wind chills, also parts of Oakland County, uh, and here and there, through Throughout the suburbs, we have those single digit wind chills without a real strong wind becoming breezy through the afternoon. But before that, we have some morning flakes should be light stuff, but could slow you down here and there uh, just with a little slick coating. Perhaps high temperatures coming late in the day with a warm front coming at us. And uh, e even with that warm up, the winds whipping through the afternoon, it's not going to feel all that much more mild. Here's a look at some of the snow coming into Lenaway County. Uh, 
dry air is eating into this, so the first wave uh, is going to struggle, but hits our south zone here and then moving west to east. And the heavier amounts projected across our north zone uh, throughout the late morning and lunch hour, where you could get a half an inch to an inch to the north. The rest of us guys, just a little bit of a dusting. We've got your four zone weather. If you have to head out the door, you need your seven day forecast to look into your weekend. You can find your zone on the weather tab of clickondetroit.com. Everett. Brandon, thank you. Right now we want to get to your, your traffic right now. We're following breaking news of an accident that has the ramp blocked from the eastbound lanes of I-96 to eastbound I-94. Police are telling us that a vehicle hit the guardrail head on. And at this time, they are investigating what caused this crash. Of course, we'll stay on top of this, let you know when it clears and update you throughout the morning. Breaking news out of D.C. The Senate has confirmed Representative Tom Price, a Republican from Georgia, to be the next secretary of the Department of Health and Human Services. This during an overnight vote. The Price uh, narrowly uh, won confirmation 5247. Uh, Democrats opposing him because of his determination to dismantle the Affordable Care Act and his op opposition to abortion rights and his support for cutting Medicare. Their suspicions were deepened when it was re revealed Price traded health care stocks while overseeing the health care industry. Price has denied any wrongdoing. And developing overnight, a fire breaks out on the 15th floor of a downtown Detroit apartment building. The fire started above the state deli on the corner of State and Washington. Two people were taken to the hospital, their condition unknown. Arson investigators are continuing to investigate the cause of that blaze. A mother and baby are continuing to recover after their minivan was hit by another speeding van. The accident happened on Seven Mile near Evergreen Thursday afternoon. Detroit police say the minivan was parked when it was struck. The child was in a car seat. Both were taken to the hospital. That accident is under investigation. Well, with more than two dozen Detroit schools on the chopping block, parents met with members of the school board to explore their options. Board members and the majority of parents say they're ready to fight the state if the move is made to close the underperforming schools here in Detroit. They say with a brand new school district, they should be starting with a clean slate. You can't close 38 schools and leave our children to go where? into school districts that they're unfamiliar with, um, trying to get to schools that are miles and miles away from their home. We have to find solutions. The solution is not to close buildings. The, the solution is to make schools better. Now, anticipating a lawsuit, the school board is getting ready to hire a lawyer. An audit of the November election shows at least 31 people voted twice in Michigan, and they might be prosecuted for that. They cast an absentee ballot and also voted in person. Now, separately, the audit found human error, not fraud, caused mismatches between the number of ballots cast. There is an international controversy brewing over the American Girl Doll Company. New this morning, we'll tell you why some parents are calling for a boycott. Plus, over the edge, it's a frightening scene as a tractor trailer is blown off a bridge. And save the whales. Volunteers and rescuers rush to help more than 50 that somehow became stranded. Happy birthday for celebrating today on this 10th day of February. A happy birthday going out to Cadence Winowski, who's turning one today. So is Claire Stepanski. Happy birthday to you. Jaden Baker Woodley is turning five today. Kendall Jackson is 12. Jalen Dennis is turning 15. And Brendan Pogramich is turning 18. Maya Clark, 38. Douglas Horton, 47. Patty Nelson, 50 years old. Glenn Gratz, 51, as well as Darian Smith, turning that age. And Donald Colasar, 55. Richard Holland is 56. Radford Grant is turning 62 today. Phyllis Keeney, 62 as well. Happy birthday to you. Dewey Reeves is turning 64. And Willow Rushing, happy 90th birthday. Also turning 90, Leontine Price and Robert Blumberg celebrating a birthday. And a happy anniversary going out to the following couples. Eric and Karen Lawrence celebrating their 12th wedding anniversary. And Michael and Susan Carver celebrating 28 years together. So happy anniversary and happy birthday today to you if it's your special day. We're back in a moment. Take a look at this. A 
frightening scene in Virginia Beach as a truck plunges off a bridge into the water below. The truck going off the southbound side of the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel Thursday afternoon. A Navy helicopter was called in to rescue the driver who later died on the way to the hospital. There was a wind restriction on the bridge at the time of that accident as gusts were more than 40 miles per hour. It is 509 now on your Friday and see you in court. That is a quote from President Donald Trump after judges refused to reinstate that controversial travel ban. That's right. The decision from the federal court was unanimous, but the fight clearly is not over. Local 4's Nick Monticelli is live with more reaction from the White House and here at home. Nick. Jason, good morning to you. This doesn't come as much a surprise of a surprise after you looked at kind of the initial reaction from the judges in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. If you remember a couple days ago, we played a soundbite here on the air from one of the judges talking or asking the question, have we had any incidents with refugees coming in? And then he laughed and he goes, no, the answer is no. Regardless of all that, though, now we know that this court's ruling is what it is and the president weighed in very, very quickly. We'll uh, see them in court. It's a political decision, and we're going to see them in court, and I look forward to doing it. We have a situation where the security of our country is at stake, and it's a very, very serious situation. So we look forward, as I just said, to seeing them in court. Now, when he says seeing them in court, he's talking about taking this to the U.S. Supreme Court. You're looking at video right now from a meeting that was held last night. Kenneth Foudy is the owner and representative of Samaritas, which is an agency that helps refugees relocate to Michigan. In fact, just last year, they helped 1,000 refugees move here to Michigan. He says the ruling still is, a, is kind of a win, but, however, they are talking about that it's not necessarily one. He says it's a, it's a good thing, but moving forward, it's not a total victory because they're still looking at a lot of unknowns. These folks receive the highest amount of vetting of anyone in the world. But there are still so many unknowns. We're looking at ways that we can act now uh, as far as doing the work that we're doing with people in the 90 days. And when he says things they can do to act now, they're talking about that because they still have refugees slated to move to Michigan as we speak. So this is a giant moving puzzle. There are so many pieces and so many parts that will continue. As we said, the president likely will move this to the U.S. Supreme Court. In fact, he will be because he says, we'll see you in court. That is the next stop if the Supreme Court decides to take up this matter. We are live this morning. Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News today. Yeah, we'll definitely be watching this one. Nick, thank you. It is 512 and turning to weather now. The Northeast is continuing to dig out this morning after a massive winter storm slammed the area. Travel, as you can imagine, was disrupted. Schools and businesses were shut down as more than a foot of snow blanketed the area. That storm even took a fatal turn after a doorman in Manhattan died after slipping and falling into a window while shoveling. But speaking of snow, several people tried to brave the whipping winds in Massachusetts, all for a good cause, for charity. A polar plunge was scheduled to raise money for those in need and to fight hunger, but 30 minutes before the event, officials canceled it because of the blinding snow. But as you can see here, the blinding snow didn't stop several people from jumping into the angry seas to create a frozen memory that they probably will never forget. That just looks a little too cold for me. I'll, I'd make the donation. I'd write the check. I think I'd rather jump into the ocean than what a lot of the polar plunges in the Midwest jumping into lakes. That water is much colder. The ocean water is warmer than the lakes here in Michigan? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't freeze. It does have the salinity in it. But yeah, I mean, it is, huh. uh, the, especially the Atlantic Ocean, you know, part of the Gulf Stream. It has the warm weather coming up from the uh, equator that keeps it more on the mild side, more tolerable, not that, like it's going to be bad. Right, right. <laughs> well, I mean, you could call, you could be in the middle of summer and go into Lake Superior and have it be a polar plunge. That's how cold yeah, it is up there. Just, I, you know, ice chunks floating. You've seen that before, too. Uh, in the month of June, where we've had ice blocks and chunks in our Great Lakes surrounding our beautiful, pure Michigan. So massive snowmaker out east, Anywhere between six and about 16 inches throughout New York, Connecticut, 
Massachusetts and more snowy weather coming to the northeast as we go through uh, the weekend and it's going to be an active February I believe for the east coast here it is cold notice the wind is not real strong it's 21 degrees southwest wind is 8 but your feels like temperature is 11 and we will see some single digit wind chills through the morning even without the real strong winds lunchtime and beyond those winds start picking up south south West 10 to 20. So mild air trying to move in, but as long as we've got the winds whipping and temperatures in the upper 20s to maybe low 30s through the afternoon, it's going to feel nice and chilly out there. Best chance for snow showers mainly uh, through the morning hours, maybe lunch hour uh, as you head up into our north zone. But notice the wind field here. Yesterday it was all coming out of the northwest. It was bone chilling. Today we've got these south winds, so we have mild air not only working in for today, a warm front is coming, but we will see 40s, maybe even middle upper 40s in some spots Saturday. Here's a look at the clouds, and we look down in Lenaway County, a little bit of light snow, maybe a few flakes and flurries. I think our north zone again stands the better chance of maybe a half an inch to an inch as we just see a little bit more in the way of darker returns on radar that'll be trending more through our north zone. But as we anticipate dry air eating into some of this, really limiting accumulations into just a dusting, and it could slow down some areas during the morning drive. And again, as we get later into the morning and early afternoon, those snow showers fade away. Sunday, starting early in the morning, I think we start to get in on this Pacific Ocean weather. And that will bring probably a start early morning rain and cool air coming in through the late morning and afternoon on Sunday means we could get a switch over to a little bit of snow, maybe some sleet. But uh, it could very well be just all rain all day. We'll keep an eye on that. Tomorrow is mild, 45 cloudy. Just a chance for a late afternoon, uh, maybe sprinkle or two. Uh, things are, again, mild this weekend, but colder next week. And we could get a couple of heart-shaped snowflakes on Tuesday. All righty, Brandon, in the traffic department right now, we are talking about this uh, accident here on I-96 on the eastbound side. The ramp is closed to eastbound I-94. Uh, we have learned that this is a deadly accident. To get around all this mess while crews are working to investigate and to clean up the mess there, uh, you want to exit at Warren Avenue to get around all that. Uh, we also want to let you know about a little bit of construction that starts at 9 o'clock this morning. It's in Sterling Heights. It's on the southbound side of Van Dyke from 17 mile to 16 mile. One lane is going to be open there daily from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. and that's going to continue until Monday. We're keeping our eye on the I-96 fatal accident. We'll let you know once that clears. Guys? All right, let's talk about sports. It was uh, a rough night last night, and I think a lot of people may be anticipated due to the matchup, the Red Wings in Washington, D.C. to take on the Washington Capitals. Still fighting for a playoff spot, the Red Wings are, but this one started out looking promising for the Wings. Got two goals uh, from Andreas Anthanasiu. The Capitals answered, though, and it was 2-2 after one. I see you. Uh, jumping ahead to the third, the Wings down by one. The captain, Henrik Zetterberg, ties it up at three, but that's when the wheels fell off. They go on to lose 6-3 and remain six back of the final playoff spot. Yikes. Quick update on Wings goalie Jimmy Howard. He was uh, playing in Grand Rapids with the Griffins, but he sprained his right knee Wednesday night. He re-injured that knee. Uh, I think it was during prep, may have been during a game, but uh, he is dinged up again. The Wings calling it a minor setback. They say it's an irritation of scar tissue. He should be back on the ice Monday or Tuesday as he works his way back to the Red Wings. Well, a busy weekend for both Michigan and Michigan State on the hardwood. Spartans play host to the Iowa Hawkeyes tomorrow night in East Lansing. The tip off there set for 6 p.m. The Wolverines, on the other hand, will travel to Indiana to take on the Hoosiers Sunday afternoon. Tip off for that game is set for 1 p.m. And looking for something fun to do tonight, may we suggest that you head over to Callahan Hall for the big rivalry game between Detroit Mercy Titans and Oakland University Golden Grizz. 
Tip off at just after seven and before the game, they'll be honoring the Titans from 1977. That team went all the way to the Sweet 16. Dick Vitale, super sensational. They'll <laughs> also be retiring the number 42 jersey of Terry Durant. Very cool. Busy weekend, including the Mike Tissio Outdoor Pond Hockey Classic tomorrow at 11 o'clock in Macomb, if you can be there. You know, the pond hockey is really popular, especially in Minnesota. Oh, yeah. They got yeah, 10,000 yeah, lakes betcha. over there. <laughs> <I've run. laughs> All righty, guys. Thank you. It is 519 now and happening today. The heat and warmth fund is teaming up with WWJ News Radio 950 in hopes of raising more than a million dollars for families in need. This is a live look for you at all of the volunteers who are standing by for the 14th annual winter survival radiothon. It's happening now until 7 p.m. and they're standing by to take your calls. Call 888-579. 4950 to make a donation and we should let you know since 1985 thaw has distributed over 172 million dollars in assistance and helped thousands of families in need so it's definitely a good cause and they would appreciate you getting involved to help well new this morning well that wasn't part of the routine the college cheerleader takes a tumble not once but twice we'll have more on this but first not fancy loose or foot loose and fancy free, I should say. A Valentine's dance canceled because of a law most people didn't even know existed. Welcome back, everybody. It is 524. And we want to get to breaking news that we're following from Paris. And that's where four people have been arrested, including a teen girl, after explosives were found in a suspected attack that was stopped. That's all investigators are saying right now, but we will keep you updated throughout the morning as we get more information. Brandon? We are keeping an eye on radar. Nothing super impressive, but snow coming in a little earlier than we anticipated. You can see just to our west parts of Lenawee County, Jackson County, and that'll be drying up as it comes in, but still producing a little bit of light snow through the morning and maybe even into the lunch hour, especially in our north zone. There is a little bit more than that radar showed. 21 right now feels like 11, and as we go through the day, we are going to warm up to around 30 degrees this afternoon, even warmer. Uh, into the late afternoon and evening, but it is going to become breezy and it'll feel chilly most of the day. Jason. Taking a look at what's going on on the roads, eastbound 96, the ramp closed to eastbound 94. Uh, this is the exit at Warren Avenue due to the deadly crash that we were telling you about earlier. All right, so a Valentine's dance in Oklahoma has been canceled due to the fact that dancing is banned near a church. The city of Henrietta, which has a population of about 6,000, has a law in the books that bans dancing within 500 feet of a church or school. In this case, the church is 300 feet away. So Robin Kinney asked officials if the law has ever been overturned, and they say the law has never been brought into question. What's interesting enough is that Kinney's husband is the city attorney. The police chief says that he's never enforced the law and he has no interest in doing so. Why would you ban dancing near a church or a school? for that matter. Well, there's Footloose. I mean, I don't think we'll see Kevin Bacon any, any time soon in that town. <laughs> I guess it also depends on what kind of dancing we're talking about. There's that too. Read my mind. New at, uh, new at our next half hour, stories from Dearborn, Dearborn Heights, Detroit, and Flint. Right now, let's check in with Nick Monticelli. He's following the disturbing developing news out of MSU where a rape investigation is underway. That investigation involves three football players. What's going on with them and what the victim's attorney has to say next on Local 4 News Today. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 530 starts now. The campus of Michigan State University rocked by allegations of rape as several students have been suspended in a case linked to the Spartan football team. Protecting the Eiffel Tower knew this morning why one of the most famous places in the world is getting extra security. Plus a bitter cold start to the day. Brandon tracking some changes though for the weekend. Good morning. Finally made it to Friday. We got there. Can you say that again? Good morning. We finally <laughs> made it to Friday. We got there. Oh, we just got to make it through the work day. But hopefully the sun 
and us will help you get through it, right? We'll work on that, Brandon. <laughs> the only sun is the one behind Everett and Jason that you will likely see all day. Although we do have a chance later this afternoon, we've got clouds and even a few flakes trying to move in. Temps are cold, 17 in Pontiac, 17 Lapeer. It's 20 in Howell, 21 right now at Metro. Clouds have helped us. We talk about the little blanket of insulation, so not expecting a dramatic drop. And luckily, the winds are not real strong. Coming out of the southwest right now, now about seven, eight miles an hour. It does knock our wind chills down into the single digits. Feels like nine in Mount Clemens, eight in Flint, eight in Adrian and low double digits elsewhere. So you want to dress for single digits to low teens for at least the first third of the day through the mid morning. Temperatures are going to try to warm up late morning into the afternoon. The winds start cranking again out of the southwest 10 to 20. So it is going to try to bring mild air and still going to feel very chilly. 25 Five degrees at noon and morning snow chances basically wrapping up through the late morning or early afternoon in our north zone. You can see some of the snow showers coming into Jackson County over near Coldwater and coming into Lenaway County here. Fairly light, but enough to create a little slick surface. Watch out for that. And you can see there are more spotty light snow showers coming in from the west. Again, mainly during the morning and most of it should be on the lighter side. Everett, how are we looking on the drive? Well, we are following breaking news from the traffic department where we have just learned that the accident that was blocking the ramp from eastbound 996 to eastbound 994 is deadly. Police are saying that a vehicle hit the guardrail head on, unfortunately killing one person inside. Uh, right now, we are learning that that ramp has reopened, but at this time, police are investigating what caused that vehicle to crash in the first place. Of course, we'll keep you updated, but the ramp has reopened. Top story this half hour, the sex assault investigation rocking the campus of Michigan State University. Now, the alleged victim is a student. The accused are members of the Spartan football program. Let's go live now to local force Nick Monticelli. Uh, Nick, how many players are we talking about here? Evra, good morning. We are talking about three players from the MSU football team, and we know who they are, but until they are charged criminally, we are not going to release their names. Now, this criminal investigation, as you can imagine, is ongoing right now by campus police there at Michigan State. The university, though, has been aware of the situation for several weeks. The alleged sexual assault happened in January. The victim is a student at MSU, but whether or not this happened on campus or off campus is unclear right now. Again, these are allegations of rape against three football players. The players have been suspended from the team and the activities and removed from on-campus housing. Detectives are interviewing members of the coaching staff and others regarding their response since the complaint was made in late January. One football team staff member has been suspended by the athletic department pending the completion of this investigation. The victim's attorney did not want to go into much details, but she did say this. I was contacted uh, several weeks ago, uh, excuse me, several weeks ago by the um, young lady that was a victim of a, an assault. This is a very strong young lady. What happened to her should never happen to anyone. Um, it's going to take a long time for her to recover, and I just ask that everyone respect her privacy. Michigan State has released a statement saying that MSU police is investigating the allegations of the sexual assault against three MSU student athletes. The police department has been in communication with the Ingham County Prosecutor's Office and upon concluding the investigation will forward its reports for review of possible criminal charges. Now sources close to this investigation have told us that they, that they do expect all that to happen, those criminal charges sooner rather than later. We are live this morning, Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News Today. Yeah, we'll definitely keep following this story. Nick, thank you for the update there. It is 534 and happening today, a Gross Point Woods woman is expected to be arraigned in connection with that crash that killed a FedEx truck driver on Detroit's east side. Police say that 26 year old Maya Maria Maria Batts was driving fast down Newport Street when she blew through a stop sign and hit a FedEx truck, killing the driver, 48 year old Roderick Motley. Batts was charged with second degree murder, operating while intoxicated, driving with a suspended license and reckless driving. 
Dearborn police are looking for answers surrounding a police chase that left a woman dead and the driver seriously injured. It's a story we first broke yesterday morning. It started just after 5 Thursday morning in Dearborn Heights and ended in Inkster. The owner of the car turned out to be the driver's girlfriend who was at work when the police chase took place. The driver, identified as Sheldon Hornbuckle, is in grave condition and a 33-year-old woman from Monroe in the passenger seat died. The chase happened after an officer turned on his lights to pull over Hornbuckle for a broken taillight. Instead, he took off. Now police are turning to his girlfriend for some answers. Just how long we've been together, is it unusual for him? Why was he out that time of morning? And I'm like, I don't know, I'm at work. Police are investigating the crash and if Hornbuckle pulls through, he will face a list of charges involved in that fatal chase. Flint residents will no longer get help with their water bills. And the state sent out a letter saying the subsidies will stop at the end of this month. Mayor Karen Weaver says that she's concerned with the abruptness of the cutoff, but that it's a welcome sign that Flint's water is improving. Well, new this morning, beating the odds, not once, but twice. Yeah, I'll have the inspiring story <laughs> of this local mom who refused to let a serious health battle stand in her way. That's coming up for Inspire today. And ahead at six in the car port, controversy surrounding Ford Field. Why some want to shut it down. And turn off the lights. Apparently so. But first, something new from McDonald's. How the fast food giant is trying to step up its menu. That and more and we come right back. Where does the Interfraternity Council at Penn State University has suspended social events for all Greek life chapters until further notice. This comes less than a week after Timothy Piazza died after falling down the stairs of the Beta Theta Pi house. The coroner ruled Piazza's death accidental. Fraternity members told police he was under the influence of alcohol when he fell. The university is promising significant changes in the fraternity's social policies and practices. Okay, take a look at this. Fans at UCLA had some pretty nervous moments last night. You'll definitely want to see this. Watch the cheerleader there at center court. Mmm, bam! She hit her bottom and her head. This is during a timeout. But take a look at what happens next. Wait for it. Oh, and there she blows. An assistant had actually stepped in to carry this young woman off the court after the fall. And here it is again, in case you missed it. Bam! He ran into a bit of trouble and tripped and fell with that injured cheerleader in his arms. Here's the good news, though, as we watch the slow-mo replay. Mm, 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 that had to hurt. She was able to stand and walk around on her own will. Uh, there's no word on, on how serious any injuries might be, but thankfully she was able to, to get right back up. Got to be careful. It's a, it's a difficult sport there sometimes. Uh, on the same day, several people have been arrested in Paris, as we just told you about, with explosives. We've learned there are plans to build a bulletproof glass enclosure around the Eiffel Tower. Now, this is a move that's aimed at making France's most iconic monument more secure. Construction on the new eight-foot-tall enclosure is said to start in the fall, and it will cost more than $21 million. Rescuers and volunteers racing to save stranded whales in New Zealand's Golden Bay. It's one of the country's largest recorded mass whale strandings. Up to 300 have died, and volunteers are trying to send more than 50 back out to sea. In the meantime, they scrambled to keep them as comfortable as possible. Many volunteers came from around the area to help the stranded whales in whatever way they could. And this month, we are celebrating black history by asking everyday Metro Detroiters, celebrities, and some of Detroit's prominent business leaders what inspires them in our history. Yeah, so this morning, we're hearing from Sheila Clay. She is the president and CEO of Neighborhood Service Organization. Look. There is probably no person better than my mo own mother that inspired me. Uh, she was born and raised in a small town in South Carolina, saw uh, bigotry and hatred. Uh, as a child, had a childhood friend who was hung, and she raised her children to, to fight for the causes for, for, for blacks, but also recognize that everyone who is not black is not your enemy. 
And we want to hear from you all month long on your thoughts about Black History Month, who inspires you or what inspires you from Black History Month. Go to clickondetroit.com and you can post your comments there. And you might see some of them on the air as we stop and talk to people all month long. You could also tweet us or hit us up on Facebook at the WDIV page as well. It is 543 now. And in case you missed it, parents are threatening to boycott American Girl, the doll company, after it revealed its new doll design this week. Take a look. The design showed the new dolls would come with permanent underwear sewn onto them. Previously, the dolls have come with underwear that could be taken off and changed. Now, the company says it won't affect how other clothes fit. Parents who don't like the change say it cheapens the doll, and they don't understand why this is needed in the first place. Something tells me the parents are the ones that are upset, and the kids probably couldn't care less. I have nothing to add to that. Moving on to McDonald's. Moving right along. Yes, because McDonald's has introduced a new sandwich. It's called the Snow Crab Sandwich, and it's going to be served at four San Francisco Bay restaurants. Hmm, this is the second attempt by the fast food giant using the Bay Area for inspiration. In May 2016, they unveiled the made-to-order Gilroy garlic fries that were made with garlic from the city of Gilroy. Experts say if the sandwich is successful, the long-running filet of fish could be in jeopardy. Oh, so, okay, so our floor director, Dana, when she saw the picture, she covered her mouth, put her head down, and shook her head. Would you try it? i try it. I don't see it replacing the filet of fish. You like a filet of fish? A double filet of fish. I've never had a filet of fish. Never. But I don't eat the fish, though. It's ever. actually pretty good. Brandon, what do you? I'm a, uh, yeah, I love the uh, filet of fish, and, I, you know, I'm just thinking about the price of snow crab, and perhaps, I don't know how rare it is, you probably watch some of those crab hunting shows on cable, right? But I'm just thinking, really, we're going that way? Let's just have the little fish patties, forget it. All right, 21 degrees out there right now. Good news is the wind isn't real strong. Clouds have moved in, a little blanket of insulation, but it is not warm. Instead, wind chills in many spots near single digits or in single digits. Nine is the feels like temp right now in Mount Clemens. Feels like seven, your wind chill in Lapeer. Eight in Flint, eight in Adrian and the rest of us in the low double digits and it's pretty much what will be the case throughout the morning. Late morning into the afternoon, the winds start picking up out of the south and it will feel colder, but the air temperatures are going to try to get into those upper 20s to low 30s through the afternoon. Snow shower chances this morning moving in from the west and wrapping up about lunchtime, especially in our north zone. You see Jackson County over into Lenaway County, some light snow moving in here. We've got dry air set up and the pressure is still pretty high, which are a couple of things that will limit any kind of serious snow here. But these somewhat darker shades of blue moving across southern lower will uh, produce a little coating here across I-94. If anybody's driving out to uh, the west towards Chicago Grand Rapids area, watch out for that. Uh, other than that, you see other little bands of snow coming out of Wisconsin and Minnesota, which is why our north zone is predicted to get perhaps a half an inch to a little bit more throughout the morning and lunch hour. And then things become, again, a little bit more stable, but breezy this afternoon. Saturday should be dry and mild. Sunday, we'll watch some of this wet weather in the Pacific Northwest heading our way once again. So there goes that snow through uh, the late morning and afternoon. Don't expect much, but we did get some bonus snow bands coming at us this morning. We just warned you about that because of the commute in some areas will be a little bit slippery. Most of Saturday is Drysville, and then on Sunday it's going to be sort of hit or miss rain showers and that could convert to some wet snowflakes and or some sleet through the afternoon on Sunday. So a little wintry mix possible to end the weekend, but temps on the milder side through the weekend next week slightly cooler and a few flakes flying perhaps on Valentine's Day. Jason. All right, let's take a look at what's going on on the roads. We have that closure going on. Uh, one lane open 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. as they investigate that crash near Warren, 94 and 96. And then uh, 75 at Gibraltar, one lane open 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. Everett. It is 547, and this week for Inspire Today, I want to introduce you to this hardworking mother of five. She's fought through a life-changing medical diagnosis and wants to encourage others like you to never give up. We are here in Detroit for Inspire Today. I'm with Barbara Little because you nominated your daughter. Tell us your daughter's name. Her name is LaVon Thomas. And why did you nominate her? 
because Levon has gone through so much in the past four years. Lo and behold, here comes another diagnosis of a brain tumor. It hit me. It hit me really, really hard. What does your daughter mean to you? <laughs> she is my heart, and she knows it. You could have lost her. No. Never was in the equation at all. And this has been difficult on her and her husband. Oh, Leon has been a jewel. That man stepped it up. He did everything. You just can't do it all. Not when you got five kids. So she is actually on her way home right now from dropping off the kids at school. She has no idea we're coming. No. Okay, let's bye. do it. Let's do it quick. Let's go. Bye. Okay. All right, bye. Levon? Yeah. Hi, how are you? Can we come in? Yeah. I'm Evrod Casimir from Local 4. How are you? I'm well. We're here to inspire today. Your mom wrote a very nice letter about you, and we want to let her read it. Is that okay? Oh, Lord, I'm going to be on TV <laughs> crying. <laughs> um. I'm writing to you to introduce my daughter, Levon Thomas, and her wonderful husband, Leon Thomas. My daughter had a brain tumor removed, the second brain tumor in four years. Levon and Leon have been married for 14 years and they have five children. With five kids, it's hard to keep the house clean and Leon is doing a great job. They sure could use someone to thoroughly clean their home and, full, and a full body massage for the both so they can relax. <laughs> that is really something. I just, first of all, I am totally surprised by this. I mean, I'm doing very, very well. I'm much stronger, but I can't do everything that they want me to do. Well, as I mentioned, we're here to inspire today, and your story has touched a lot of people in our community. <laughs> Detroit Maids heard your story. They want to donate a free cleaning to your house top awesome. to bottom. Awesome! That is so awesome. <laughs> that would be so wonderful. Lavender Mobile Spa, they are a mobile massage company. Okay. They are going to come and give you and your husband two one-hour massages so that you guys can relax. They actually booked a room for you at the West End. <laughs> With no kids? With no kids. <laughs> what do you want to say to people out there to give them a little bit of inspiration like what you have? You cannot give up. Everything is going to work out. It may not work out the way you want it or when you want it, but it really does work out if you don't give up. She has such a positive attitude. Two brain tumors over four years, mm. and she never gives up. You shouldn't either. A uh, big thanks to Detroit Made and Laughter Mobile Spa for participating and helping us grant this wish. And we want to share more stories like this of Metro Detroiters. So if there's somebody that you know that you'd like to nominate for Inspire today, go to our website, click on Detroit.com, click on the community tab, and there you can submit a letter. And you never know, we might surprise you and show up at your house, at your job, maybe even at the mall. Seemed like such a nice family. Yeah, very cool family. Time now is 5.15 ahead this morning. How to score some free tickets to one of the most anticipated music events in Metro Detroit. We're back after this. Tonight at 11. Happy Friday, everybody. We have a little bit of snow coming in to uh, southwestern, south central lower, and most of Metro Detroit is dry. Lenawee County getting a few flakes, and get ready in Washtenaw and Monroe counties, and we'll just watch that snow. Little bands, it'll be coming and going uh, throughout the morning mainly, and then this afternoon, a little bit warmer, but it will be breezy near 30 degrees, but we'll have 10 to 20 mile an hour winds. Watch out for a few morning flakes, Jason Carr. All right, Brandon, taking a look at uh, M10 and the Southfield Freeway, looking like uh, moving smoothly there. It is Friday, which means we are giving away something for free here on Local 4 News today. Yes, yeah, so you can now enter for your chance to win two tickets to see Rain, a tribute to the Beatles. The show is going to take place on March 18th at the Fox Theater. And to enter and for official contest rules, head on over to the contest page of ClickOnDetroit.com. All right, so Rhonda's off, but she's still working to keep us in shape. I'll let her do all the work. <laughs> Let's check in with her for this week's edition of Fitness Friday from Gazelle Sports. Preventing injuries, if you have a goal of running a 5K, a 10K, or a marathon, you want to make sure that you're recovering properly after the run. So Chris has been running marathons practically your whole life, co-owner of Gazelle Sports. Talk to us about how to prevent injuries. Well, we really want to come back after a long run and really help those muscles recover. So let's get down and show you on a foam roller okay. um, what we're going to do. We're going to find a muscle that we want to uh, lengthen and, and soften and really try to get the oxygen back in that area. Okay. So let's do it on, on your gluteus right here. 
So you have that rolling right across there and you're finding that little pain point um, and as you roll, um, that muscle softening and lengthening. Um, and it's really helping that recover much quicker because if you just sit down, oh, other, other foot on when you're, oh. there you go, <laughs> yes. So when you just go and you sit down or you're driving, your muscles just continue to shorten and tighten. So this okay. is gonna really help. And you can do this in all parts of your leg. Show some of the other ones. Yeah, so uh, this is an orb ball, and this is even more intense. And so okay. um, you can get this where you're rolling across on your hip flexor, which we have a lot of issues with our hip flexors. Mm -hmm. um, and you can do the same thing on the side of your body on your IT band right here. So okay. Why don't you try that where you're on the side of your body. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. And you're just rolling that up and down. And that's. And so show us that last one and tell me how long would you do this after your run? Each time, you're going to try to do this for just five minutes. And uh, you're going to, this, this one is actually great for the calf. It's the Adaday stick. And you're going to come in and really find that little tight spot and roll across it and then you can do it transversely also. And you say this is just as beneficial or more beneficial than actually stretching after the run, more important. Absolutely. All right, good deal. Let's keep stretching. Well, there you go. We do want to let you know Gazelle Sports offers training camps, and right now you can get 20% off the run camps at Gazelle Sports. Just use the code WDIVFITFRI, F-R-I, for the discount, and enjoy. It is 557 on your finally Friday and coming up all new during our six o'clock hour local stories from Westland, West Bloomfield and Detroit. Plus another hack attack. This time a fast food chain is the target. The warning out there for customers. And speaking of fast food and following months of buildup, we now know when a popular food spot is going to open its doors here in downtown Detroit. It is worth the wait. So we'll have that when we come to put that into my calendar. In exactly. Get ready. <laughs> Local 4. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 6 starts now. Taking it all the way to the Supreme Court, following a ruling on President Donald Trump's travel ban, the Commander in Chief says the battle isn't over just yet. Plus, disturbing allegations against Michigan State football players, the investigation into a sexual assault. Brandon? Good Friday morning, gentlemen. We are chilly once again. Some single digit wind chills and spots and tracking a few Friday flakes. But you wouldn't know it with this wonderful graphic right here behind us, everybody. Welcome to Friday. Thanks for waking up with us. If you are awake at this hour, you have made it to the end of the week. I'm Efrod Cassidy and I'm Jason Carr sitting in for Rhonda today. Let's get out the door. Brandon's got your forecast. We're not going to really like it, though. Well, I mean, it's not terrible. It's, I think, going to be better than yesterday. Warmer air is coming in, but we will see the winds picking up. In fact, just in the last hour, they have. Southwest winds at 13, 21 degrees, but single-digit wind chills, and we want to dress for that, whether it's the kids or yourselves at the bus stop. Sunrise time is 7.36 a.m. on your finally Friday. 19 degrees at the bus stop, feeling colder than that, and tracking some morning flakes. Afternoon hours do get warmer, 30 degrees or so as the kids get out of school. But again, it will be on the breezy side. Southwest winds bringing that mild air in will knock down the wind chills. So it's sort of a catch 22 with that wind. Right now we are looking at some snow coming into Jackson and Lenaway counties. Be moving shortly into maybe Livingston, Southern Livingston, Oakland, I'm sorry, Washtenaw and Monroe counties and eventually into Wayne. But if you're driving out on I-94 toward uh, Chicago, Grand Rapids, Western Lower, you'll run into some of that light snow and there are reinforcements up north. Mainly first half of the day for the snow and drier later on. We'll take a look at the weekend forecast coming up, but we need to get a look at the morning drive with Evrod. After you see your four zone weather, it's right there for you on the weather tab of clickondetroit.com. Well, we just picked up our second accident of the morning, Brandon. We'll tell you about this one. This one is in Sterling Heights. It's on the northbound side of Mound Road right there at 10 Mile. We've got the left lane there blocked, and we'll let you know when that clears uh, as we also talk about breaking news from Detroit's west side. That deadly crash that we told you about earlier this morning is now being investigated. We've learned that one person was killed when they hit the guardrail there on the ramp from eastbound I-96 to eastbound I-94. The ramp was closed for several hours, but we should let you know that it has since reopened uh, in that area.
Even more breaking news now out of Paris this morning. That's where four people, including a 16 year old girl, have been arrested on suspicion of planning a suicide bomb attack. Police are saying that the group was planning on detonating an explosive belt in a tourist area of the French capital. They also say explosives and computer equipment were found at the group's residence. Of course, we'll stay on top of this story for you and bring you any new updates throughout this newscast. Next stop, the Supreme Court. President Trump saying he's taking his travel ban to the highest court in the land following a late night ruling refusing to reinstate the ban. Nick Monticelli is live. Nick, it was a unanimous sweeping decision. It was, Jason. Good morning to you. And the reaction from President Trump, nothing that nobody did not expect. Anybody did not expect, I should say. Uh, he reacted swiftly and quickly to it, posting on Twitter and making some comments saying, as you mentioned, he's going all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. After listening to much debate, the federal appeals court rejected the government's argument the travel ban should be reinstated for national security reasons. President Trump was quick to respond to the courts, checking his executive order and power. We'll uh, see them in court. It's a political decision, and we're going to see them in court, and I look forward to doing it. We have a situation where the security of our country is at stake, and it's a very, very serious situation. So we look forward, as I just said, to seeing them in court. What's next? That's kind of how we're living day by day is what's next. Kenneth Foudy is with Samaritas. We're the largest refugee resettlement agency in the state of Michigan. The agency helped just under 1,000 refugees locate to Michigan last year. The folks that are on the ground meeting the families at the airport. Foudy met with an interfaith-based group to discuss the refugee concerns, the ruling, and ways to continue to help refugees already slated to arrive in Michigan. He believes the biggest misconception is refugees will flood the U.S. without any screening. These folks receive the highest amount of vetting of anyone in the world. As the president prepares for a legal fight, many groups are hoping to keep families together. Fauci adds the ruling is not a victory yet. But there are still so many unknowns. We're looking at ways that we can act now uh, as far as doing the work that we're doing with people in the 90 days. Now, here's another uncertainty. Will the U.S. Supreme Court take this case? That high court always has a decision to not hear it and just defer to the lower court's ruling. So that is something that we will have to wait and see. We are live this morning. Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News Today. Thank you, Nick. The Senate has confirmed Representative Tom Price, a Republican from Georgia, to be the next secretary of the Department of Health and Human Services during an overnight vote. Price narrowly won confirmation 52-47, Democrats opposing him because of his determination to dismantle the Affordable Care Act and his opposition to abortion rights and his support for cutting Medicare. Local Ford defender Kevin Dietz first broke the story, and now the case of a Macomb County woman forced to give birth on a jail cell floor is making national headlines. Jessica Preston shared her story with us, and Thursday, sheriff, the sheriff there, Tony Wickersham, addressed the incident and stood by his jail staff. Two uh, LPNs were working that day. They were assessing her. They were on the phone with the doctor. Uh, monitoring contractions. But we both know that she was there in the morning around 7. She was there again at 11.30. She was there again at 1, this time with blood on her leg. And still, the baby wasn't born until 2.45. The hospital's what, uh, two minutes away, three minutes away? To about three minutes away. Though, I don't have the medical records. You know, in all fairness, maybe those medical records should be brought out and let the people see what the, the medical staff did each time uh, she was brought down. Well, the sheriff also said that the jail does not have a doctor on staff on Sundays because it's apparently not in the budget. Preston's baby was born on a Sunday. Let's talk about R&B singer Trey Songz. He's supposed to appear by video connection a little bit later today for a preliminary exam here in Detroit. Now, he is charged with assaulting an officer and aggravated assault after that onstage tirade that was all caught on camera back at the Joe in December. Trey Songz, whose real name, whose government name is Tremaine Neverson, is expected to waive his exam. Let's talk about what's happening today. The Heat and Warmth Fund teaming up with WWJ News Radio 950 in hopes of raising more than $1 million for families in need. It's the 14th annual Winter Survival Radiothon, and it's happening right now until 7 p.m. Just call 888-579-4950 to make a donation. 
Since 1985, Thaw has distributed over $172 million in assistance and thousands of families have been helped uh, in the process. So we hope you'll make a donation. Time now, 607. And there is a Michigan company looking to cut its workforce. And coming up, we'll tell you the employees who might be affected. Plus, Kellyanne Conway smack dab in the middle of another raging controversy why lawmakers from both sides are calling for an investigation into the White House advisor. Welcome back, everybody. Here's a look at what's happening today. An eight time felon who was arrested during the raid at the Victory Inn in Detroit last month is set to appear in court. 45 year old Brian Doherty is charged with being a felon in possession of a firearm. Police say that during the raid, Doherty made movements consistent with fleeing from police and a 38 special revolver was found in his room. Also today, the Prime Minister of Japan begins a busy weekend in the United States. Shinzo Abe is expected to meet with the U.S. Chamber of Commerce this morning before laying a wreath at Arlington National Cemetery. He then has a midday meeting with President Donald Trump scheduled at the White House. We're back in one minute. Perfect for Val. The Trump administration is facing criticism this morning over a possible ethics violation by an advisor to the president. Kellyanne Conway is said to have committed the violation when she encouraged the purchase of Ivanka Trump's clothing line during a recent interview that asked her about the line being dropped from store shelves. Go Second. buy Ivanka's stuff is what I would tell. I'm gonna, I'm gonna well, get, I hate shopping. That, I'm gonna go get some on myself today. There, it's a wonderful line. I own some of it. I fully. I'm gonna just give it. I'm gonna give a free okay. commercial here. Go buy it today, everybody. You can <laughs> right. find it online. I do want to ask you about wow, those comments by Conway immediately comment, led to um, numerous you know, legislators calling for an ethics investigation. Person. Meantime, Press Secretary Sean Spicer said Conway has been counseled, his word, counseled, whatever that means, on the issue at hand. During Thursday's briefing, he would not elaborate. We are months away from our next Thanksgiving Day parade, but friends to the show are making sure that this guy right here is prepared <laughs> for a repeat of last year's bead battle. Yeah, so uh, the distinguished clowns wanted to make sure that this does not happen again. Take a look. But we're so thankful to the distinguished clown corps <laughs> coming out in full force this year, supporting the parade. Whoa. Oh, good catch. <laughs> They're not going to hit me today, I, I'm telling you. I keep missing. Yep. But here we go. <laughs> but it's just a great Whoa. group of people that do their best to make this parade special. All these people are laughing like this is a joke. <laughs> So every year at the parade, you see these clowns. I think they're so funny. They got their beads and their hats and their makeup, and then they throw beads at us, and we get pelted by them. Like, are, I have, are they chucking them like, like really? Some of them, and they have like this like smile on their face. So I have co you know collected a nice amount of beads over the year after getting hit with them. So they sent me uh, something for protection this year as sort of a make good. I know you're not supposed Whoop. to open an umbrella oh, boy, indoors. Here, here comes the bad this luck. This is the umbrella that they told me to, <laughs> to use. Oh. Oh, yeah. Next time, and I'm going to use it to, to deflect. Wow. You see? I'm ready for you next year, clowns. You see? So thank you very much for my uh, for my. Uh, There's more here. For right, there. right, and we'll keep the beads. You know, I enjoy collecting. My son actually keeps them on his, on his bed. This is a pretty <laughs> awesome. Look at I that. I know. You could use it as kind of like a, you know, in case you can ward yeah. off the killer. That's nightmare inducing. It's kind of like poltergeist. <laughs> I'm thinking it could be a hat. Look at, the, look at the cool little uh, embellishment on the, on the bottom. Yeah, it's just a little clown face. Our associate uh, producer, our segment producer, Sheree Calhoun, was supposed to be in here, but she's definitely afraid of clowns, so we gave her a pass this morning. <laughs> Make sure she gets that. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're going to leave this on her desk, and then she will hate us for the rest of uh, our lives. We love We aren't going to need this clowns. today, though, or are we? You know, I, it, maybe on Sunday with a little rain. Today, just a little too cold. For the record, I never opened it to the click part. <laughs> so maybe one year, my sentence, one year bad luck. Everard gets all seven. Uh, here is our Bernie Zetner over at the Belle Isle Bridge. It looks cold over there, but we don't have snow on the ground. Big snow pack, and uh, that is helping our morning temperatures a little bit, as is the cloud cover, and the wind knocks it down a little bit. 21 degrees with a southwest wind at 13, your Hanson's weather window information. That means wind chills are single digits in a lot of spots, and we just want you to make sure the kids are layered up as they head out, and wind chill is always an issue on exposed skin, hands, 
the neck, the cheeks, the ears, things like that. Just make sure we're covered up. A few flakes flying out there this morning as well. It sort of depends on where you are. It's not a big widespread blanket of snow, but some pockets of snow trying to move in. Uh, 18, 19 degrees or so at 8 a.m. Again, feeling like single digits. South winds today. They will start cranking later in the uh, morning, mid to late morning and afternoon, 10 to 20, maybe gusting to 25 or 30 at times. Bringing in mild air, but it's not going to feel great with that wind blowing out there. 30 or so through the afternoon, maybe a little bit warmer into the evening as we wait for a warm front to come at us. Here are the flakes coming into Lenaway County. We've been saying this for the last hour. This thing is just barely chugging along here, but uh, certainly worth noting if you're heading out I-94 to the west, you'll run into some of that snow. Also tracking a little bit. Uh, just north of Lansing uh, coming into the north zone and other areas uh, north of Detroit going to see a little bit more of this activity, maybe a better chance for a half an inch to an inch if this stuff pivots down. But for the rest of us, flurries and a few flakes mainly just during the morning hours and that warm front means an even warmer Saturday cloudy most of the day tomorrow, but 45. Late afternoon sprinkles possible, but better chance on Sunday for a little bit of rain in the morning and cooler air coming in in the afternoon. Jason, that means we could end the weekend Sunday afternoon with a little wintry mix. All right, let's take a look at traffic. We have Sky 4 flying above the uh, 75 696 area. There's an accident on northbound mound at 18 mile. Once again, northbound mound at 18 mile left lane blocked. But there you see 75 and 696 uh, looking good. Let's get into today's consumer headlines. We're talking about Shake Shack. The fast food chain has revealed when it's going to open its Detroit location, so get ready for that. Plus, Kellogg is laying off hundreds of workers. But first, fast food chain Arby's is dealing with a data breach. Let's go live now to Maribel Aber, who's joining us from NASDAQ with that and more. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Evrod. Well, Arby's has been hit by a cyber attack. The fast food chain discovered a data breach that affected about 1,000 restaurants. This is according to security expert Brian Krebs. So more than 350,000 credit and debit accounts may have been affected. Arby's is recommending customers check their credit card statements and report any suspicious activity. More than 1,000 layoffs could be in the works at Kellogg. The company is closing 39 distribution centers after deciding to use the warehouses of grocery chains instead. The distribution centers average about 30 full-time workers each, so it works out to more than 1,100 jobs. Kellogg hasn't named the distribution center set to close, but online news reports say locations in Evansville, Indiana and Warren, Ohio will be shut. Okay, Michigan's first Shake Shack is set to open February 23rd. The burger outlet will open in the first national building in downtown Detroit. Look for plenty of local items on the menu, and there will be local beer as well, including Griffin Claw Brewing and Shorts Brewing. Evrod, you are in for a treat. Let me tell you, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, a <laughs> Shack burger is always a winner. I prefer the chicken burger, but yes, they are fantastic. They've got the dipping That's sauce. That's good, too. Yeah, the cheese dipping sauce for the fries. I can go on and on. We're looking forward to it, and it's right next to the roasting plant here in Campus Marshes in Detroit. Maribel, thank you. Jason, over. At the box office, The Dark Knight builds a relationship in the Lego Batman movie. Take a listen. You need to take responsibility for your life. Not right now, I don't. And it starts by raising your son. Hmm, the spinoff from the 2014 blockbuster Lego movie focuses on Bruce Wayne's alter ego as he faces a threat from the Joker, realizing he can't save Gotham alone. The Lego Batman movie, certified 98% fresh by Rotten Tomatoes, is rated PG. Keanu Reeves is an army of one in John Wick 2. He's reprising his role as a retired hitman who is terrible at staying retired. But he's good at retiring other people for good and has an oath to help a former friend take on a killer's convention in Rome. John Wick 2, a rated R for ultraviolence. And Dakota Johnson is back for Fifty Shades Darker. The sequel finds her reuniting with her domineering boyfriend, Christian Grey. But her character is more independent these days until a shadow from her past, his past, shows up to the party. Fifty Shades Darker is drawing horrible reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. It is rated R for the obvious no elements. Rules, no All right, Jason, thank you. 619 is your time and still to come. A frightening moment for students on a school bus. Find out what sent them flying.
from their seats. We'll have that when we come back. But first, a group of teens on the run in a stolen car, and the crime was broadcasted on Facebook Live. Little did they know what would happen next. And our Facebook friend for the day is Kara Howe. She's from Gross Seal, and she tells us that she loves spending time with her family. She's looking forward to making her son Emmett a big brother in May. She also watches us every morning on her iPad while getting ready for work and says that we make her laugh every day. Well, we're glad to start your morning off on the right foot. We're going to send you a gift card from Tormina's Pizza just for being our friend of the day. And if you at home would like some pizza as well, like the Local 4 Facebook page, click on the Friend of the Day tab, and be sure to upload a photo and tell us a little bit about yourself, and you could be our next friend of the day. We're back in a moment. The Local Welcome back to Local 4 News today on a finally Friday. We've been tracking the snow all morning. It is just barely nudging along through Jackson and Lenawee counties, but some snow moving into Washtenaw and Monroe counties shortly. Some light snow and flurries through mainly just the morning hours shouldn't stack up to much. Wind chills are in the single digits in a lot of spots, but we will get to near 30 later this afternoon, albeit with a pretty strong breeze. Everett. We have another accident that we have picked up this morning, our third accident of the morning. In fact, this one is on the northbound side of I-75 just past Newport <coughs> Road. Because of this, uh, we only have one lane open. It is 624 and five teens from Mississippi are in custody after showing a police chase on Facebook Live. Police say that the chase started after they received multiple calls of carjackings in the area. The teens took off from the scene of the second carjacking and somehow thought it was a good idea to stream the chase live on Facebook. Police fired shots at the car that they were trying uh, to stop, hitting a 15 year old in the arm. The teens then crashed the vehicle in a ditch. That 15 year old who was hit was taken to the hospital, but is expected to be okay. All five teens are waiting to be charged. Startling video out of Dayton, Ohio, showing the moment where kids were thrown from their seats during a crash. Take a look. An SUV with three 16 year olds ran a stop sign and slammed into the bus, causing it to flip on its side. The students on board were six to 14 years old. One, along with the bus driver, who suffered minor injuries. Two teens in the SUV suffered minor injuries as well. It's glad that they were okay. That could have definitely gone a different way. Oof. Awful. It is 6:25, and coming up next at 6:30, we have local stories for you from Dearborn Heights, Westland, and Flint. Plus, some say he's the greatest hockey player of all time, besides Gertie Howe. Uh, Wayne Gretzky reveals he had other plans for his future, something to do with Detroit. Yeah, but first, the competition in northern Michigan brings snow and ice to life. That's coming up next. It's today's top video. Welcome back, everybody. It's time for today's top video, the annual Michigan Tech Snow State Competition. And this year's theme was snow cascades across the decades. Look at that. The winning sculpture was about the Wild West New Frontier. Second place statue called In This Icy Condition We Mourn Prohibition. Another organization got third place, highlighting the 80s with a Back to the Future theme. The statues were featured around campus at Michigan Tech and in the community. Very cool. Literally. We're back in a minute. All live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 6.30 starts now. And we start with some alarming allegations, as right now three Michigan State University football players are under investigation for rape. And a death left unnoticed for hours forces a university to suspend all fraternities. Grant. Single digit wind chills, snow, coming at us, but it's Friday, baby. Who's with me? We are all with you, Brandon. The good news is it is Friday heading into your weekend. You just got to get through about eight hours of work or a few hours of school and you're home free, right? And that's assuming that the weather goes according to plan. 
Right. Let's turn things over to Brandon because he's got some stuff in the forecast. Well, you just never know here in Detroit. The weather has been swinging crazy directions the last couple of weeks and today very winter like to start. But part of the weekend going to be into the maybe middle 40s, close to 50, 21 degrees right now. A live look at Mount Clemens and streets are mainly dry around the area. Southwest winds at 13. That means single digit wind chills in a lot of spots. Ann Arbor feels like nine right now. Metro and city airports also right around nine. 11 degrees in Lapeer and Howell is your wind chill. So we need to address the kids for that uh, temperature around 19, 20 degrees. Uh, southwest wind at about seven to 13 miles an hour will keep single digit wind chills and a few snowflakes also flying out there through most of the day dry. But first half we need to watch some snow showers coming at us from the west and models have been very consistent with the north zone getting the lion's share. Temperatures through the afternoon will be warming into the low 30s could be late afternoon evening south winds 10 to 20. So it's trying to bring in mild air, but it will feel cold as that wind is a whipping Jackson County. County. Lenaway County getting some snowflakes now and it is moving into Washtenaw and Monroe counties. A little bit of light snow in our north zone there as well. And again, mainly a first half of the day by lunchtime. Think things are going to start moving on out and not accumulating to very much. Your four zone weather is available for you right now on the weather tab of click on Detroit.com. Jason Carr report. Yes, uh, we have an uh, accident a map here to show you I-75 past Newport Road. Only one lane is open there and Sky 4 over Van Dyke at 696. Uh, looking pretty clear there as yep. we get off to our morning commute on a Friday. The allegations are disturbing. Yeah, they certainly are. Three Michigan State football players under investigation this morning for an alleged sexual assault. Let's go live now to Nick Monticelli. Uh, joining us this morning because I understand Nick charges might be on the way in this case. They could be ever good morning to you. This alleged sexual assault happened last month and we do know the names of these three football players involved, but because they have been charged yet, we are not releasing them. The criminal investigation is ongoing right now by campus police. The university has been aware of the situation for several weeks. The victim's attorney, Karen Truskowski, will not release details, but did tell us this. I was contacted uh, several weeks ago, uh, excuse me, several weeks ago by the um, young lady that was <clears throat> um, a victim of a, an assault. The victim is a student at MSU, but whether or not this happened on campus or off is unclear at this point. The university, though, does confirm it has multiple investigations ongoing, saying Michigan State University Police is investigating allegations of sexual assault against three MSU student athletes. The police department has been in communication with the Ingham County Prosecutor's Office, and upon conclusion of the investigations, they will forward its reports for review of possible criminal charges. This is a very strong young lady. What happened to her should never happen to anyone. Um, it's going to take a long time for her to recover and I just ask that everyone respect her privacy. The players are three football players and they have been suspended from team activities and removed from on campus housing. Now sources are telling me close to the investigation that those charges could come sooner rather than later. We're live this morning. Nick Bonacelli, Local 4 News today. Nick, do we know if any staff members are involved in this investigation? You know, it's interesting. We have been told that detectives have been interviewing staff members regarding their response to this after the complaint was made. We have been told that one football staff member has been suspended pending this investigation. All right, a story will definitely be following. Nick, thank you. We are also following stories from across Metro Detroit this morning. Yeah, that includes stories out of Westland, West Bloomfield and Dearborn Heights. And we'll start there because a man there is in grave condition this morning and a 33 year old woman now dead after a police chase that started in Dearborn Heights. Police there noticed a car driving with a broken headlight and tried to do a traffic stop. This was just after five Thursday morning. The driver, 50 year old Sheldon Hornbuckle, took off and crashed into a train angster just a few blocks away. Hornbuckle was in his girlfriend's car at the time of this crash, but the passenger was another woman who died at the scene. Why were you is my question. 
He, why, why were you even out at that time? It's a very good question. Police are investigating the crash, and if Hornbuckle does pull through, you can imagine he'll face a long list of charges for this fatal crash. Two teens will go to trial in connection with the murder of a West Bloomfield mother. Tuesday, evidence was laid out in court. 18-year-old Deshaun Smith, 19-year-old Jalen Stringer are charged in the murder of Diana Perserol after her body was found in a burnt car in December. Smith is facing murder charges. Stringer is facing evidence tampering charges after police say he washed Smith's clothing and helped him after Smith confided in him about that murder. And at Westland now, three people, though three people pictured right here, have been charged in connection to a Westland shooting that had left two people dead. 19-year-old Dominic Charleston is there in the middle. 19-year-old Colby Taylor is on the left. And 17-year-old Amber Marie Tackett is pictured there on the right. And they're charged with killing Howard Wick and Jordan Bradley. Here's what we know. Police say that they believe the shooting was drug-related. Officers found a bag of drugs at the scene and believe that it could have been a drug deal gone wrong. All three are expected back in court next week. Residents in Flint will no longer get help with their water bills. The state sending out a letter saying the subsidies will stop at the end of the month. Mayor Karen Weaver saying she's concerned with the abruptness of the cutoff, but it's a welcome sign that Flint's water is improving. More than two dozen Detroit schools are in danger of being closed. And last night, parents came together to meet with members of the school board to see exactly what can be done to prevent these closures. Board members and parents both say that the battle with the state, they will battle with the state, and they're ready to if the move to close underperforming schools goes through throughout the city. They believe with a brand new school district, a clean slate should also be given. You can't close 38 schools and leave our children to go where? into school districts that they're unfamiliar with, um, trying to get to schools that are miles and miles away from their home. We have to find solutions. The solution is not to close buildings. The, the solution is to make schools better. However, the school board is getting ready to hire a lawyer as they're anticipating a lawsuit. It is 637 on your finally Friday, and some people, I guess you could say they're not happy with Ford Field's new look. Coming up, the petition urging the Lions to uh, knock off the nighttime lights. Plus, an all-out brawl why lawmakers came to blows after this. Sky Welcome back, everybody. It is 640, and the Interfraternity Council at Penn State has banned alcohol at all social events for all 46 Greek life chapters until further notice. And this is less than a month, less than a week, rather, after Timothy Piazza died from falling down the stairs at a frat party. And sadly, his body wasn't found until hours later. Fraternity members told police that he was under the influence of alcohol when he fell. The university promises significant changes in the fraternity's social policies and practices. A cleaning robot sent into a damaged reactor at Japan's Fukushima nuclear plant had to be removed Thursday before it completed its assignment. Ex experts say the camera problems were most likely caused by high radiation. It was the first time a robot has entered that chamber since the 2011 earthquake and tsunami critically damaged the Fukushima plant. Tokyo Electric Power Company said it was trying to inspect and clean a passage before a different robot goes in to measure radiation and temperatures. Officials say two people are recovering after an explosion and fire at a Louisiana pipeline last night. The Phillips 66 pipeline was located near Williams Discovery Natural Gas Processing Plant in Paradise. Two people were taken to the hospital and one person is unaccounted for. 60 homes in the area have been evacuated. Well, let's talk about this. A, a fight broke out in South Africa's parliament on Thursday as President Jacob Zuma got ready to deliver his State of the Nation address. And it was on national television there. Opposition legislators tried to stop Zuma from addressing the chamber. They insulted him, even calling him names like rotten to the core because of corruption allegations. Opponents then walked out in protest. 641 is your time on this Friday morning. We're starting the morning out at 21 degrees, but I have a feeling it feels a lot colder than that. It does. The wind just in the last hour started picking up mm. here. So single digit wind chills and a uh, few flakes out there. But listen, we have nothing to complain about. These guys maybe, but I don't. I'm walking. Here I go. 
Take a look at what folks out east were dealing with yesterday. We showed this to you, but it was a pretty big winter storm that slammed the area from Philadelphia to New York to Boston. Travel disrupted schools and businesses were shut down as more than a foot of snow blanketed the northeast. Saw reports as high as about 18 inches of snow in some spots. Uh, there's a ripple impact of misery across the country as more than 4,000 flights in and out of the region were canceled. So that was yesterday and again anywhere between six and about 18 inches of snow depending on where you were and there is a look at that storm yesterday at 930 in the morning. It was hammering New York City and then moved into Boston. The hardest hit areas were Connecticut and Massachusetts as far as snow totals, but we are looking at live radar returns here and notice ain't nothing going on in the northeast right now. They will be getting more winter weather. Uh, especially the higher elevations of the Northeast uh, through the weekend and into Monday. Here's what we have uh, happening here a little closer to home. We are tracking a little snow that is moving in. I still think the bigger weather story today is the bitter cold to start a little snowy and definitely frigid with wind chills right now. Eight in Flint, nine in Ann Arbor, nine at City Airport and at Metro Airport, one of the cooler spots down in Lenawee County where they're getting some snow. Seven is the wind chill at Adrian right now, so it's single digits to maybe low double digits for wind chills. We need to dress in layers, gloves, hats, the arsenal, cover up the exposed skin. 19 degrees will feel much colder and a few flakes at the bus stop for the kids, depending on where you are. Afternoon, the winds start picking up. In fact, late morning into the afternoon, south winds 10 to 20, gusting to 25, making it breezy. And although we get upper 20s to low 30s this afternoon, it's going to feel nice and chilly out there. Closer look on the radar picture does show Jack in Lenaway County is getting some light snow, a coating very quickly here. If you're driving 94 out toward Jackson, Kalamazoo, Grand Rapids, uh, Chicago, you're going to run into some of this and it's going to slow you down a little bit. No monster major snowmaker here, but there is a little bit more in behind it that's going to pivot through and models have been pretty consistent with areas along and north of M59, perhaps getting a half an inch to an inch, but that is about it. Warm front comes in late, so our highest temperatures probably don't come until the evening hours today. And if we get the clouds sticking around with those breezes kicking up, it's going to feel crunchy and cold all day. Here's a system coming at us on Sunday. I think we get through tomorrow dry isolated spritz or sprinkle in the late afternoon, but cloudy 45 on your Saturday. How about that? On Sunday, we're looking at morning rain showers and it likely will transition at times back and forth with a little sleet and snow could end in the afternoon as some wet snowflakes coming down, cooling through Sunday afternoon and into Monday. Looks like a couple of lake effect snowflakes Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. The winds are going to be whipping most most of next week, it's going to be on the cooler side. Evrod? Well, we are doing okay in the traffic department this morning as we give you a live look from Sky 4. This is Sky 4 right there at I-94 at Gratiot. You can see a lot of cars on the road this morning, but traffic is moving by smoothly there. However, we do have one accident that we're keeping our eye on. It's at I-75 on the northbound side, just past Newport Road. And because of the accident, only one lane is open, so traffic is slowing down just a little bit in that area. You can see the yellow arrows on your screen. We'll let you know when the accident clears. It is 646 on your Friday morning and we're celebrating Black History Month all throughout the month of February. And this morning we hear from actor an actor on what inspires him or who inspires him from Black History. Take a look. There are so many of us that are in inspiring and so insightful about what we who we are as people and our inventions, I think, have a lot to do with how we live our lives and what we need from that. Um, my, so my first thought was Madam C.J. Walker because of the hot comb. I just don't I don't understand how she could have <laughs> thought of that <laughs> and made that happen. But look how it's just it's grown so much. I mean, from flat irons and, you know, it wasn't just for our people. It really was, you know, something that was universal. 
The hot comb saves so many people's edges in their kitchen. In case you recognize that woman, her name is Shante Moore. She is in town performing in the hit play Married But Single 2. And we want to let you know it runs through uh, the 19th of February, starting on the 14th. And it's at Music Hall for Performing Arts. Make sure you go check them out. We also want to hear from you on who inspires you or what inspires you this Black History Month. You can go to clickondetroit.com. And all throughout the month, we're going to share some of your comments on the air. Let's head on over to the carport. Good morning, one and all. Last year, Ford Field got a little bit brighter before the season. The Lions adding LED lights to the roof. Anyone driving through the city at night can see them glowing. Eh, now they're defending the den from criticism. Some residents are hoping to pull the plug. A petition has been started on change.org to have the lights turned off simply because they are too bright at night. The petition says it violates a city ordinance. The ordinance says the Spillover of light and night glow are minimized to the greatest extent possible. However, in a statement to the free press, the Lions said they follow the rules. Nearly 900 people have signed that petition so far. So we wanted to see what you thought about this on the Facebook and the carport. Raymond says, I think the light should st uh, stay. It's pretty cool seeing our city lit after so many years of darkness. Rodney, too bright for who or whom? They look awesome each morning I drive through. Phil, uh, love the lights, and Mark, looks sweet rolling into town from the freeway. Keep them on. He's known as the great one, and yet he didn't even want to play hockey. NHL Hall of Famer Wayne Gretzky out at the Pebble Beach Pro-Am playing golf this week. He did an interview with Dan Patrick on Thursday. Gretzky, who grew up in Brantford, Ontario, says as a kid, Hockey was not his favorite sport. His dad pushed him to play it. So what did he really want to do? Taking baseball all day long. I, I, I would have loved to have been the shortstop for the Detroit Tigers. I grew up such a big Tiger fan, Ernie Harwell, and listening to the Tiger games. So and, you would have been yeah, Alan Trammell before Ron Alan Trammell. And, yeah. yeah, all those guys. That foul ball caught by a man from Iron Mountain. <laughs> You wouldn't think about that, that he was into baseball that much. When you watched him play hockey, he was so thin, you know, didn't really have that bigger build. And I wouldn't have thought that uh, baseball, not that you have to be big to play baseball, but uh, I wish he would have because he took my Blackhawks down every single <laughs> time in the 80s. This is what you call a digression. Your, your Red Wings, too. Yeah, here we go. Let's off. take a look at what people are saying. Oh, the Tigers. At Tigers say, we have a 99 jersey with your name on it, at official Gretzky. So the team, the club, obviously hip to that. So carport is closed. Let's go back to Everett. I, I want a jersey, Tigers. Can I get one with, like, the number 32 on it or something like that? That'd be cool. All right, Jason, thank you. It is 6.50 now and still to come here on Local 4 News today. All you can drink beer. Okay, now that we've got your attention, we're going to tell you where that's happening. And uh, we also have today's stories to watch for. Keep it here. <laughs> it's Welcome back, everybody. We want to continue to follow breaking news for you this morning out of Paris. That's where four people, including a 16-year-old girl, have been arrested on suspicion of planning a suicide bomb attack. Police say that the group was planning to detonate an explosive belt in the French capital. A specific target has yet to be uncovered. In your stories to watch for, two separate investigations are ongoing after three MSU football players and one member of the athletic staff suspended following allegations of rape. The university says it will take immediate action pending the outcome of that investigation. Everett. President Trump has said the next stop for his travel ban is the Supreme Court. This all comes after the Ninth Court of Appeals ruled against reinstating the travel ban. The executive order restricts immigrants from entering the U.S. from seven Muslim-majority countries. Anyone who has stopped by Arby's for a sandwich or some horsey sauce could be at risk after a massive data breach. The company says more than 355,000 credit and debit cards may have had the information compromised. This happened between October of 2016 and just a few short weeks ago. The company is working with police, but suggests watching your bank account for any odd activity. R&B singer Trey Songs is expected to appear in court by a video connection later today for a preliminary exam. 
He's charged with assaulting an officer and aggravated assault after this on stage outburst at the Joe back in December. It was caught on camera. He is expected to waive his exam. And happening right now, the 14th annual Winter Sur Survival Radiothon, the Heat and Warmth Fund, Thaw, teaming up with WWJ to raise more than a million dollars for families in need. The lines are open now until 7 p.m. to donate 888-579-4950. Boy, do we feel it today, too. We've got 21 degrees. Luckily, the cloud cover stopped temperatures as they were plummeting. The wind picking up a little bit the last hour. Southwest winds at 13, so the wind chill is 9. Single digit wind chills throughout the morning here and there. And some light snow is moving in. This could slow you down as you're heading 94 through Washtenaw County. And just some light stuff that'll hit parts of Wayne County into Livingston County here. Another wave or two possible, but late after afternoon early evening is when we expect to hit that high in the low 30s won't feel it very much because those winds are going to be whipping through the afternoon the snowy chances are more so this morning through lunch and that should dry out all right let's take a look uh, at our traffic map updated within the last few minutes we have a southbound southfield freeway at 96 accident the left lane is blocked just so you know and finally this morning, it's today's talker. And if you love beer and want all you can drink beer, go to Japan. Sapporo. Yeah, <laughs> there's a restaurant they're offering all you can drink beer for less than a dollar, but you do have to get there. Uh, the restaurant is called Vogt. It's a casual restaurant that's offering multiple all you can drink plans at their Tokyo based establishment. I'll trade you that for an Asahi. Uh, for 100 yen or 88 cents, you will get a 10 minute window to drink as much as your heart desires. And if that's not enough, you can add an additional 10 minutes for another 100 yen. Yeah, the catch is the beer clock begins the second you order and you can't have another drink until you finish the first. Seems fair for the price. Would you guys do this? No, I'm not that big a fan. Uh, yeah, here. not not anymore. Ne neither of us are beer drinkers. That was the perfect story to end the end the show with, I would, right? You know, maybe a little sake shot, some singa, Sapporo. What was the one you said? Asahi. Asahi. It is the weekend, right? Have a great one, everybody. We'll see you at noon.